Hey, hello and welcome back and that is right it's time for data news of the week the video where we go through all the little blibs and blobs of news story that involve data all throughout the week that i couldn't put into other videos that i squeeze into this one now in today's video we've got five stories to talk about but let's get the biggest one out the way let's talk about Netta talk you may not have heard of them um if you own a nas you might even be using them particularly if you're a mac user um it is an open source service that is utilized by a number of different platforms out there it's an Apple file protocol and it has been uh, proven to have a vulnerability for those that aren't aware uh, Pwn to Own or PWN uh, 2 um, OWN uh, a show where people are you know kind of encouraged to show off vulnerabilities in software for prizes was able to show off a vulnerability um, utilizing this particular open source um, service that's utilized on a number of different platforms it was originally shown off as a vulnerability that could be used without authentication to inject um a, you know unsolicited command code into that wd system there without authentication as mentioned and this is kind of opened the door to several vulnerabilities as you can see here on screen now where does the where do you come in here it's because it's pretty much hitting all of the major nas platforms now again as this was revealed at the Pwn to Own event, it, the result was that, you know, the original uh, NetaTalk service was able to roll out a new update very, very quickly indeed. And I say very, very quickly, again, it all depends relative because when you are utilizing these things on your respective NAS platform, your Synology, your QNAP, your Acer Store and more, they obviously have to now change things on their client side and their software client side uh, to able to kind of adapt these changes and fixes now it's still an open vulnerability listed on all of the security uh, advisories for each respective platform and they have listed it on all of them as a critical uh, thing that needs to be addressed or very very important or severe depending on the way they use their own terminology there um, but as for Synology and QNAP, Synology have already rolled out a patch update for DSM 7.1, but they are still working on it for their uh, DSM older versions and SRM there. On the QNAP side of things, they've started and they've already got a rollout for QTS 4.5.4, and they're still gradually making their way through their other variants. Uh, QNAP have seemingly been the only platform that I can see that have recommended disabling uh, the AFP uh, Apple filing protocol. Um, on their settings and file services there um, and again Acer Store have listed it but they've not gone into too much detail there again they've got they've talked about the initial publication of it but that's really it as it stands on the Acer Store platform but at least all three of these platforms are acknowledging it right now next up just a quick one it looks like that Synology router is getting ever closer to release as it has appeared on amazon.co.uk page you can see here the Synology RTX router with some of the information about you know its capabilities and specifications has now been listed there online and on in generally this system along with a lot of releases before they formally get revealed um, and released by the brands do tend to arrive on different e-shops online but very rarely do things like this appear on Amazon of all things they normally have quite tighter control and they generally generally will only appear on their pages when official releases have happened so this is a very good sign for that Synology Wi-Fi 6 router arriving very very soon now again I'm just chucking this in it isn't a huge story and we have got more to talk about today but for those of you that are kind of sitting on the fence wondering whether it's going to arrive you're already on the verge of buying a Wi-Fi 6 router anyway but you were just thinking well is this Synology one coming this is a very positive indicator of that Next up, we've got a data center story, something you don't really hear that much about normally, and it involves the Hertzner Cloud, a German company that have got lots of big, big data center areas of coverage there. And again, they support a lot of different service providers and businesses and um, have reported that due to a malfunction on uh, some of their raided drives, they lost 1,500 um, snapshots of storage. Now, it's very important to bear in mind this isn't the loss of actual um live current data this is the loss of snapshot data there so this is going to be that historical uh, version type data of existing backups there now so what that means is although the uh formal current data has not been lost the ability to revert some of that data that's stored and again this is going to be a small portion of data on there for some uh, business users that have got data on that cloud uh, and that data server um uh, the data center there um they're not going to be able to recover up to that point because once you lose some of the data in the middle of snapshots 
that's it. You can't really revert all the way to the past there. So again, you could have a year of snapshots there. But if you lose one month in the middle, you lose all of the, the older legacy back snapshots there behind it. Now, what's really weird, and again, it's detailed a lot more on this golem.de article that has been updated, is that one, they've still not disclosed this on their public alert pages, which is really odd. Because although this, in the grand scheme of things, isn't actually that much data, it's still enough if I was a business user, I'd want to know that, for example, if a corrupted version of my data was backed up, that I could still use snapshots to try and revert and reverse back there via those cloud revisions. Um, they have reached out to people that have been affected, uh, and according to the article, have been offered 20 euros of cloud credit, which, in the grand scheme of things, is an incredibly piffling amount of money um, which again makes me wonder just how many people were actually affected by this for that kind of sum of money but still nonetheless it's very rare for us to hear about these sort of things happening on data centers who uh, generally have ridiculous amounts of redundancy and backups generally in place with all of that data there and finally, let's end things on a couple of new products at very different ends of the target user spectrum there. Uh, the first one, a company you must have heard of known as Black Magic. And again, if you do work in post-production or photo or video editing, um, or any kind of television meeting, I should say, you are almost certainly uh, going to have heard of these guys. Now, they have produced, kind of, although they never really refer to it at any point, their own NAS. They've got their own range of NAS type devices. They refer to them as the Cloud Store series uh, from Blackmagic. These are, for all intent and purposes, NAS devices. They're standalone systems that have got 10 GBE on board, the ability to expand storage, automatic backups there, uh, RAID support as well, synchronization with uh, Dropbox as well and they've, and they've got these uh, arriving in a multitude of different formats in small and big versions the price tag is pretty impressive there but what's really impressive other than the 10 gbe and again this system does arrive with four 10 gbe ports on the rear there is when we learn about the storage array this system is built up of multiple uh, pcbs filled to the brim with super fast nvme ssds there so again you are talking ridiculous ridiculous speeds and even if the external saturation is still 40 gigabits per second again in shared access there that is going to be phenomenal it's got an hdmi out that isn't kvm keyboard video mouse it is standalone in what it does so you can monitor what the system is doing but again this is a tremendously impressive piece of kit here even if as we control f we can see that the word NAS does not appear anywhere on that page, even though this is obviously utilizing the same kind of protocol that we've mentioned before involving a network attached storage technology that includes the software and stuff like that. And again, people working in post-production are going to love this. Again, there's a standalone 8TB model um, and there is these larger of the arrays that are involved, such as the 320TB absolutely chopped to the gills with multiple nvme ssds inside all slated side by side so i'd be really interested to see the cooling of this but the price tag on some of these such as the 80 tb model rocking around for thirty thousand dollars this is not going to be a modest home item if we break it down into the specifications for example they don't really go into too much detail about the process that this thing is rocking. The fact that it's running M2 NVMe SSDs, I'd be curious what the protocol is. So, for example, is each one of those little PCBs rocking a PCIe Gen 3 times 16 slot, perhaps, or a times 8 slot there? And therefore, each card could give 8,000 megs, and then it all adds up. But still, I don't know what the controller is that's handling all of this and what the internal system architecture of this is going to be. I very much doubt we'll see something like this on the channel, but I'm going to get in contact and maybe see if we can get lucky. Now, at the other end of the spectrum, while we look at all of these different cloud store items here, you can look at much more uh, current, but bu uh, much more uh, budget friendly, but still current items there. We can look at a couple of the Terra Masters here with their latest generation of the 423s. They've brought out a new two and four bay revision. And again, of all of the hardware they've produced on a lot of their more uh, modest, affordable systems, this is pretty darn good. I mean, look at this two bay here. It's got the N5105 processor. It arrives with four gig of memory that can upgrade it to a frankly incredible 32 gigabit there. And again, that CPU, I do want to look into that because I'm not thoroughly convinced there. Um, but on top of that, this system also arrives with M2 NVMe SSD 
base there inside, although they are PCIe Gen 3 times 1 there, and it's got 2.5 gigabit Ethernet there. And remember, this is a two bay box, there's even USB 3.2 Gen 2 there. So, again, you're talking 10 gigabit backups. This is very, very impressive. If we look at the price tag there, we can find out what this is going to be costing end users there. I believe we have to go to the features, have a little look there, look at the buy price. So, for that two bay, if we look at that price tag there, $379 for a quad-core, moderately powerhouse 2-bay there is pretty impressive. The 4-bay with the same specifications, there's even HDMI out, although it can really only be used to access a kind of command line GUI there, GUI, there on the back. It's still, you know, with support of the newest generation of the TOS platform, uh, and with this 4-bay uh, arriving at just $499, this is some great hardware we're seeing from them. Yes, it is more about the software and the hardware, and TOS isn't quite up there in terms of advancement with the likes of DSM and QTS, but there's still increased support there to arriving with its own surveillance platform, AI-powered uh, photo recognition, there's snapshots, there's cloud synchronization, all of that being rolled out in that beta for the new software platform. It means that this could be probably their most impressive and indeed um, most productive 2-bay and 4-bay they've ever released in their portfolio. But this has been Data News of the Week. Let me know what you think in the comments of today's news. And otherwise, I will see you next time.